in this video we are going to create the panda data frame i gave an introduction to what is the panda library in the previous video and in this video we are going to create the panda data frame data frame is the most widely used concept in the python panda library if panda is used for data analysis the main reason is the data frame it is the data frame that allows us to do analysis on the data so first we have to install our panda library in order to install it we can use the pip3 command pip3 install pandas this is how you should install pandas so it is saying requirement already satisfied that means in my system i have already installed pandas since it is already installed in my system i just have to import it i'm importing pandas as pd i'm using a named import i'm importing pandas as pd so this is what the definition of data frame is it is a two dimensional size mutable tabular data structure two dimensional means it has row and column size mutable means the size of the data frame can be changed tabular data structure means it looks in the form of a table it has row and columns like the table has row and columns let's create our data frame i'm calling it as df this is how you create it pd dot you have to use the method data frame and then you have to pass the data for the data frame now i am passing the data as a list i'm passing hello i'm passing three strings as the data now let's print the data frame i'm clearing the output this is the output i am getting this is my data frame so this right here is a data frame this is a panda data frame you can see this is in the form of a table this is the column name and these are the values in that column and this thing on the left is called as index if you are not providing index the python will automatically give the index like this and it will automatically give the column name like this let's create a modification to this data frame i am changing the data to the name of fruits apple orange mango and i am giving columns is equal to i am giving the column name we have only one column so i'm calling it as fruits now let's run the program again now you can see the column name have come here and this is our data frame right now along with the column name we can also give the index names so you have to give index is equal to let's give index since we have three row of data we have to give three index so i am calling it as fruit 1 fruit 2 and fruit 3 now let's rerun the program this is the output that we are getting so the index that we give have come here as the index fruit 1 fruit 2 fruit 3 this is the column name and this is the data so this is our data frame it is a two dimensional size mutable tabular data structure so in this video we created our first data frame and now you know what is a data frame in the next video we will see how to create data frame from list of list and dictionaries we'll see you in the next video this video is a continuation of the previous video in the previous video we created the python panda data frame 
so in this video we are going to create the data frame from nested list and dictionary so first let's create data frame from the nested list for that we have to create our list this is the data sharat is the name second value is the age and the third value is the city I have created a data list and I have created three row of data. Now I am going to create my data frame pd.data frame as data I have to pass my data list then I have to specify the column names. I am giving the column names as name, age and city I'm not giving the index if we don't give the index Python will automatically create print df let's see what is the output so you can see this is our data frame as I told you in the previous video this data frame is a tabular structure just like a table it has row and columns it has rows and it has columns so there are three columns name age and city and these are the data corresponding to that columns every row of data is represented by a number which is called as index these index and column names are there for a reason we will learn it in the upcoming videos in this video our focus is creating data frame from nested list and dictionary now we have created our data frame from nested list now it is time to create our data frame by using a dictionary for that let's create our dict I'm calling it as data dict so as the key you have to give the column name so I'm giving name and as the value you have to give all the names then in the age you have to give all the age and as the city you have to give all the city I am calling the data frame as df2 you can give any name as you want and as the data we have to pass the data dict when we are creating the data frame using the dictionary we don't have to give the columns because we are giving the columns as the key of the dictionary print df2 you can see this is the output this is our second data frame and we have created that data frame from the dictionary data so in this video we learned how to create data frame from nested list and dictionary this data frame is a very useful concept in data analysis we will learn more about data frames in the next video we'll see you in the next video in this video we are going to add columns and rows to the existing data frame once we have a data frame how we can add rows of data to the data frame and how we can add columns to the data frame so I have already created the data frame I am running the program and you can see this is the data frame our data frame consists of three rows of data and these are the columns name English and max so this is this data frame is actually representing the mark details of a student so we have three columns name and mark of the student in the subject English and max 
so before going to add columns i will show you how you can access data of a single column if you want to access data of a single column of the data frame you can do like this print df of inside the square bracket give the column name so i am giving name and you can see this is the output i am getting i got the data of the column name this way you can access data of a specific column in the data frame now i am going to add a new column to the existing data frame so this is the way i am going to do i am going to add the mark of students for the subject chemistry also so df of chemistry equal to there are three row of data that means three students so i have to provide the mark of each student for chemistry so i'm giving 45 for the first student 56 for the second student and 67 for the third student let's print df here and remove the print statement from here let's clear the output and run the program once again you can see i have successfully added a new column chemistry and data for that column so this is how i did it now we have name of the student and mark of the student for three subjects now we can calculate the total of all of these subjects for that we can do df of total equal to df of english plus df of max plus df of chemistry so by this statement what i am doing is i am adding a new column total and value of that column is the sum of all of these columns it is the sum of english maths and chemistry now let us run our program you can see we have successfully added a new column total which is the total of the marks in english maths and chemistry so this is how you add a new column to the existing data frame now we can add a new row of data to the existing data frame so we have to create our data as a dictionary you have to give the column name as the key of the dictionary so i'm creating name for english for max for chemistry and what you have to do is df dot append then specify the new row after that you have to give ignore index equal to true let's put the print statement here let's clear the output and run the program once again we are not getting the new row because we forgot to do it like this you have to give df equal to df dot append now let's run the program once again you can see the new row of data has been added the name is undertaker and mark for english is 34 math is 18 and chemistry is 78 and you have to notice one thing we have not provided data for the column total so since we have not provided data panda is filling it with the nan that means not a number so if we don't provide data for a column panda will fill it with the nan or any other value so in this video we learned how to add columns to the existing data frame and how to add row to the existing data frame in the upcoming videos we will learn more about data frames we'll see you in the next video in this video we are going to delete 
columns and rows from the existing data frame. I have already created the data frame. This is the data frame. So first I am going to delete columns from this data frame. So in order to delete columns, what I am going to do is, I am going to use a method called drop, df.drop and here I am going to pass the columns. You have to give the name of the columns as a list. So I am giving max and total. So I am giving the column names as max and total. Then I have to pass an argument in place equal to true. In place equal to true means drop the columns and overwrite the existing data frame. Make the changes reflect in the existing data frame. That is in place equal to true means. So let's run the program. You can see the columns max and total have now gone from the data frame because we deleted it using this statement. So this is how you delete columns from the data frame. If you have to only delete one column, you can only give one column as a list. If you have multiple, you can give like this. Here we are deleting columns. Next we can delete row of data. So I am commenting that statement. And I am doing df.drop and I am giving index equal to so this is the index of the data frame index is also called as row number so I am giving the row number 2 that means I want to delete that row of data then give in place equal to true upon running the program this is the output this is our new data frame you can see the index 2 is completely deleted. So this is how you delete row of data from the data frame. If you want to delete multiple rows, you can give multiple index values. I am giving 2 and 1. Let's run the program. You can see the row number 2 and 1 got deleted and only the row number 0 is remaining. Let's comment that line of code also. Now what I am going to do is, I am going to delete row and column in the same statement itself. Columns, I am going to give the column as total match and then give a comma and give the index. Index is 2. In place equal to true. Here we have given both the columns and index. Let us see what is the output. I am going to clear the already existing output and run the program again. So this is the output. The columns total and max got deleted and also the index 2 got deleted. So in this video we learned how to delete columns and rows from the existing data frame. We will learn more about data frame in the next video. We will see you in the next video. In this video, we are going to learn some attributes of the data frame. I have already created the data frame for you. You can see it in the screen. This is the data frame. So let's study the data frame attributes. The first attribute is T. The T stands for transpose. Let's do it df dot t df dot capital t and let us see what is the output you can see this is our original data frame the index numbers are 0 1 and 2 and the column names are name english and max this is the transpose of our data frame so here you can see all the column names have become row numbers index numbers and all the index numbers, the row numbers, have become the column names. So what you can understand from that is when you take transpose of a data frame, 
by using df dot t the columns becomes index and index becomes column names the transpose of a data frame is changing the columns to index and index to columns the next attribute is d types print df dot d types d types means data types and this is the output you can see name object english in the 64 max in the 64 so d types actually gives the data types of the columns so name is object that means it is a string object english is in the 64 because we have stored an integer value max is also integer value so it is showing us in the 64 the next attribute is empty print df dot md let's clear the output and run the program so it is saying as false so empty is actually to check if the data frame is empty or not if it is empty it will return true if it is not empty it will return false our data frame is not empty it has data so it is returning false the next attribute is shape print df dot shape this is the output that we are getting we are getting a tuple and it is giving us 3 and 3 that means our data frame has 3 rows and 3 columns the shape means the shape gives a tuple consisting of number of rows and number of columns our data frame has 3 rows and 3 columns so the shape of our data frame is 3 by 3 the next attribute is size print df dot size let's clear it and run it you can see the output is 9 size is actually the number of data in the data frame so 3 into 3 is 9 number of data in the data frame the next attribute is values print df dot values so values attribute will give the data of the data frame in this format so it is giving the data of the data frame in this format so that is the purpose of the values attribute the next attribute is head print df dot head of 2 let us see what is the output so this is the output of df dot head of 2 head of 2 means give the first two rows of the data frame the head method the head attribute is actually used to access the first rows of the data frame since we give head of 2 it is giving us the first two rows of data if i am giving only head of 1 it will give me only the first one row of the data the next is tail print df dot tail of This is the output of the df.head and this is the output of df.tail. The tail of 2 means give the last two rows of the data frame. Head of 1 means give the first one row of the data frame. Tail of 2 means give the last two rows of the data frame. So these are the data frame attributes. This is very useful. In the next video, we will learn more about data frame. We will see you in the next video. In this video, we are going to learn functions that can be used along with the Panda data frame. That is very helpful in data analytics. The functions are count, sum, mean, median, standard deviation, min and max. So let's try each of them one by one. 
and you have already created the data frame you can see the data frame in the screen so let's try our first function which is count print df dot count you can see this is the output the count gives number of data in each column so it is saying there are three data in the column name three data under column english and three data under column max you can also check number of data in the individual column you have to give df o specify the column name and then give our count method so it is giving three that means there are three data in the column name the next function is function sum print df dot sum let's clear the output and run the program and this is the output of df dot sum what it have given us is it have given the sum of each column since the first column name is a string value it have concatenated all that strings into one string that is why we are having such a value the english the column english consists of integer values so it have given a sum of that column and also sum of the column max so when you use sum it will give you the sum of values in each columns you can also check the sum of values in a specific column df dot english dot sum this will give the sum of values in the column english so you can see we are getting a 99 here the next method is mean mean means average we print df dot mean so this is the output of df dot main we are getting a warning here this warning is actually coming from the column name because column name has string values so it cannot find the mean of string values that is why it is creating such a warning but we have got the mean of columns english and max mean means average so we have got average of the column english and average of the column max the next method is std which stands for standard deviation you can find the meaning of the standard deviation in the internet so this is the standard deviation output that we are getting the next method is min print df dot min min means minimum value so this is our output so it is giving minimum value for the name column minimum value for the english and minimum value for max column so when the data is string data it will sort it alphabetically you can try these methods for a specific column also df of english dot min so that will give minimum value of the column english you can see the minimum value of the column english is 24 the next method is max which stands for maximum df dot max so you can see it is giving the maximum value from each column for the column name english and max so in this video we learned the methods that can be used along with the panda data frame which is really helpful in data analytics these are all the methods that will help you in data analytics data analytics means we are analyzing the data and understanding information from it we'll see you in the next video with the more information about data frame in this video we are going to learn grouping in python panda data frame so we are going to do grouping of the data frame data 
I have already created the data frame for you and it has this many columns name, sex, state, English and max. I will run the program. You can see the name of the student, sex means the gender is represented by M and F. M stands for male and F stands for female. And state stands for the state of the student and then mark for the subjects English and Max. I am creating a variable sex group and I am doing df.group by group by is the method that we use for grouping. And as the argument, I am giving sex that is the gender of the student. When I am printing the sex group, this is a group by object. If you want to see the data in it, we have to loop in that. For name group in sex group, print the name, print the group. So let us see what is the output of this. Upon running the program, this is the output I am getting, the output of this loop. You can see we have printed name and we have printed group. So this is the name of the group. The name of the first group is F. That stands for female. So these are all the female students. The name of the second group is M. That stands for male. And these are male students. So now you can understand what group by means. We are actually grouping the data frame based on a particular column, based on values in a particular column. The column that we chose here is sex. So data frame is grouping based on the values in the column sex. In column sex there are two values male and female. So it created two groups. One group for female and one group for male. We can use the functions that we learned in the previous video with these groups also. I will show you how. Print sex group dot. I'm going dot English. The column English. And I am doing max. Let's see what is the output of this. So this is the output I am getting. For female, for the group female, the maximum value in the column English is 56. For group male, the maximum value in the column English is 40. We can also group based on multiple columns. Let's see how we can group based on multiple columns. I am creating sex state group. df dot group by and as the argument I am giving a list. I am giving a list of column names. Sex and state. I am giving the column sex and state. And let's give the same loop here also. I'm copy pasting the loop and giving it here. Instead of sex group, I'm giving sex state group. And let us see the output. We have grouped based on sex and state. So the first group is F Karnataka. That means females from the state Karnataka. The second is F Kerala, females from state Kerala. The third is M Karnataka, that is males from the state Karnataka. And fourth group is M Kerala, that is males from the state Kerala. So this is the result of grouping based on multiple columns. This grouping in data frame is a very useful concept, very useful thing. In the next video, we will learn more about data frame. We will see you in the next video. In this video, we are going to learn two methods. 
that is loc and iloc the purpose of this methods is to locate the data in the data frame i have already created the data frame for you you can see now let us use the loc method print df.loc as the first argument we have to give the index number that is row number i am giving zero the first row and as the second argument i am giving the name of the column so zero the row and column name is name upon running the program this is the output i am getting the output i am getting is sharad so this loc method is allowing us to locate the data we have to specify the row number and we have to specify the column name if you change from name to sex it is giving m zeroth index value for the column sex is male m there are lot of ways in which this loc method can be used and we will be learning all of that print df dot log i'm giving zero to two and then i'm giving the column as state in place of the row number i am giving zero to two and in the place of column i have given state so let us run the program and see the output so this is the output we have got data from the zeroth index to the second index and data for the column state so this statement df dot log of 0 to 2 and state means give the value of the column state for the rows 0 to 2 now df dot log of i'm giving second row and here i am giving state to english let's run the program and see the output you can see this is the output i am getting in place of the row number i have only specified two so the row number is two and columns are from state to english now let's do like this print df dot log of i'm giving the row number as three index as three then i'm giving a list i'm giving name and state so this is the output i am getting the meaning of this statement is for the third row give the value of the columns name and state and that is what we have got here so that is all about the loc method it is used to locate the data in the data frame we have to specify the row number and the column names now let's go to the iloc method the iloc method is not different from the loc method the purpose of the iloc method is same as loc method when it comes to iloc method we have to use integer positions let's write the equivalent of this statement just look at the statement 17 we are going to write the same thing using the iloc method df dot iloc row is zero so the column is six so sex is actually the second column when it comes to iloc we cannot give the name of the column we can only give the position of the column so this first column is the position 0 this is 1 this is 2 and this is 3 so to access the value in the column sex we have to give the position 1 upon running the program this is the output we are getting the purpose is same as the loc method but we cannot specify the column names we can only specify the position of the column this is position 0 1 2 and 3 you can do everything that we did using the loc method using the iloc method so in this video we learned two methods 
like loc and iloc which helps us to locate data from the data frame. We'll see you in the next video. In this video, we are going to learn how to filter data from the data frame based on conditions and also how to apply a method. First, let's learn how to filter data based on a condition. Print df dot log of we have to use the log method that we learned in the previous video and we have to give df dot name equal to equal to mal let's run the program and this is the output that we are getting so by this statement the meaning of this statement is Filter out all rows of data where value for the column name is malu. There is only one row of data with the value malu for the column name. So we have got that row as the output. Now if you want to filter out data of all the female students, we can do it like this. df.log of df.sex equal to equal to f so that will give details of the data of the female students now let us form another condition df dot log of df of total greater than 300 so with this statement we are actually filtering out students who have total marks greater than 300 these are the students who have total marks greater than 300 now I am doing print df dot log of df of name dot str dot contains man so let us see the output of that condition this is the output so meaning of this statement is filter out all row of data where the name contains the string man this is the output that we have got you can see in the name column the values roman roman contains the string man now i am doing print df dot log of df dot name dot str dot contains malu or sharat running the program again this is the output I am getting the meaning of this statement is filter out all rows of data where column name consists of the string malu or sharat so far in this video we learned how to form various conditions and using that conditions filter out data from the data frame now we are going to study how to apply a method to the data frame this is our data frame and it shows student details it has four columns name sex state and total total is the total mark of the student now what I am going to do is I am going to add a new column which is result And then I am doing df dot total. I am going to apply my method on the column total. df dot total dot apply. And I am applying a method lambda. We know what is lambda. We learned lambda methods. Lambda x is equal to pass if x 
greater than 300 else fail so what we are doing here is we are applying this lambda method if x greater than 300 it is passed and if x is not greater than 300 it is fail if the value is greater than 300 we will store the value pass and if value is less than 300 we will store the value fail and after this statement we are going to print our data frame print df so all the students who scored greater than 300 are passed and only one student scored less than 300 and that student is fail so in this video we learned how to filter out data by forming conditions and also how to apply a method to the data frame we'll see you in the next video in this video we are going to convert our python panda data frame to dictionary and also to html it is possible to convert a panda data frame to a dictionary and to a html file converting data frame to dictionary is very easy i'm creating a variable df dict i'm doing df dot to dict i just have to call a method which is to dict print df dict you can see i have got the data of my data frame in the form of a python dictionary now we are going to convert our data frame to an html file that is also very easy df dot to html there is a method called to html and in the bracket you have to give the name of the html file so i am calling it as student dot html let's run the program the program ran successfully now we can go to the same folder as that of our python program which is functions.py so when i am going to the same folder as that of my python file i can see a student.html file here i am opening it our data frame is coming as a table in this html file so in this video we learned how to convert data frame to dictionary and how to convert data frame to an html file we'll see you in the next video in this video we are going to learn how we can convert a data frame to a csv file a comma separated values file and how we can read data from a csv file and create a data frame this feature of the data frame makes the data frame very powerful the number one reason why the data frame is used for data analysis is because we can read data from a csv file and create a data frame once we create a data frame you know what are the possibilities of creating a data frame once we have data in the form of a data frame we can do a lot of things and we learned all of those things in the previous videos so first we have a data frame you can see in the screen we have a data frame i am going to convert this data frame into a csv file df dot to csv and i have to give the name of the csv so i'm giving student details.csv let's run the program again and go to the same folder as that of our program and here you can see a student details.csv file is created you can see we have got our data frame as a csv file next what we are going to do is we are going to read csv file and create data frame from it you can see here i have a csv file which is survey data.csv i'm opening the file for you you can see this is our survey data.csv file 
you can download csv files from the internet lot of csv files are available in the internet you can just search csv files and you can download it this is one csv file that i have downloaded from the internet this is a very big csv file let's comment this line i'm creating survey data frame pd dot read csv the method is read csv and you have to provide the name of the file the name is survey data dot csv now i am going to print the survey data frame let's clear the output and run the program again it will take some time because the csv is really big so we have got our output the csv is really big so it is not displaying all the data in the output we can see that there are 37080 rows of data and 10 columns 37080 rows of data and 10 columns so from this you can understand the power of the python panda data frame we are reading a very big csv and we are creating a data frame from that csv file so this feature of the data frame is very useful in the data analysis so in this video we learned two main important things about python so in this video we learned two main important things about python data frame that we can convert our data frame to a csv file and also we can read a csv file and create data frame from it We'll see you in the next video. In this video, we are going to learn the data cleaning in data frame. The data cleaning primarily focuses on finding the missing data, the null values, and also filling the missing data. We want to find out which are the columns that has missing data, and we have to fill that missing data so that we have a good data frame to work with. I have created a data frame for you with the missing data. You can see this is our data frame. It has missing data in the column total. You can see the NAN values. So let's learn how to find out the missing data in a data frame. For that you have to do print df dot is null. Run the program. You can see this is the output I am getting. If the value is missing, it will show us true. If the value is there, it will show us false. So, here you can see these are the positions where the value is missing. And in the output of is null, you can see in those positions we have got true. That means value in that position is missing. There is one more method print df dot is na. You can call this also. The output of isna is also same as isnal. Now there is one more thing that we can do. We can do df dot isnal dot sum. So it will give you the column and the number of missing values. So it is giving us in the column total there are three missing values. So once we have found out which is the column that is having missing values, either we can uh, fill the missing values or we can drop that column. Now what I am going to do is, I am going to fill the missing values. In order to fill the missing values, we can do like this, df dot fill na and the value I am going to give is hundred and I am giving in place equal to true. We can move the print statement from here to here. You can see this is our original data frame but now you can see in the column total 
we have filled the missing value with the value 100. So we did this using this statement df.filna the new value is 100 in place is true. So wherever it finds the missing values it will replace it by 100. We have created a survey data frame by reading a survey data.csv file. So let's check the missing values in this data frame also. Print survey data frame dot is null dot sum you can see here in all the columns we are getting the value zero so for this data frame which was created by reading this csv in all the columns there is no missing values so what it means is this data frame or this survey data.csv file is a good data file. Since it doesn't have missing values, this is a very good data file to work with. Now let's do one more thing in this video. Here you can see this is the column name. Suppose if you want to change the column name, I will show you how to change the column name. df rename you have to use the method rename and you have to give columns is equal to the value should be a dictionary and the key should be the previous column name so i am renaming the name to capital name and i am renaming sex to capital sex then you have to give in place equal to true I am clearing the output and running the program again. You can see I have successfully renamed two columns to the new name. So in this video we learned data cleaning in data frame, how to find the missing data and how to fill the missing data and also how to rename the data frame columns. We will see you in the next video.